Hi, and welcome to another episode of Piano TV. Today we're going to look at a piece that I really love teaching. I've taught it a million times, probably slight exaggeration there. It's a minuetto by James Hook. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the process of learning this piece, the most effective ways to practice it, and of course I'm going to show you what it sounds like right now. Whenever I start learning a new piece, I always like to hear it first. It's just to get, to tune, get the tune in your ear. It gives you a sense of the song's overall story arc, the tempo, the mood, and all of that. And then it just makes it easier to understand when you go break it up piece by piece. The first thing we're going to do is take a look at the title, which is Minuetto. In older compositions especially, you know what, no, scratch that, in any composition, this is going to give you a lot of information about like the overall style and mood of the piece. So we're not gonna get too in depth on what a minuetto is, that'll be for next video, but minuets are generally three, four time, they're light and graceful, they're like kind of like a moderate tempo dance piece. In addition to looking at the title of the piece, you can also look at who the composer is because that's gonna give you some information too. So for this piece, it's an English composer named James Hook, and this piece was written in the classical era, so stylistically it's going to have classical traits. So just thinking about other classical era composers, you've got the giants Haydn, Beethoven, Mozart, just to give you a little bit of perspective. And the minuet was a really common dance form in the classical eras, classical and Baroque eras. Uh. So now that we have a reference, let's take a look at the music here. So the first thing to notice is where the melody is. and. You can probably guess that the melody's in the right hand. The, the reason that I think that is because there's slurs in the right hand you can see, so they want it to have a little bit more flow. The, the left hand doesn't do chords or that kind of harmony, so it isn't completely obvious. This is more like the left hand is taking the role as a duet singer as opposed to just like chordal accompaniment. This would be like two, two singers singing a piece. And you can notice in the third line, especially right here, where the melody, it's almost like it's going back and forth. Da, 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 da. So there's a little bit of interplay between these two voices. When I begin to learn this pace, piece, I first take a look at the starting finger number. In this case, it's four in the right hand and play the first melodic phrase. So in this case, the right hand is carrying our melody. So I'm just gonna play it through for you, just no frills. So once I have a feel for the correct notes and rhythmic pattern, the next step is to make that phrase sing, to make it beautiful and full of expression. So this might seem really silly, but one of the best ways to learn how to sing a melody or express a melody on the piano is to actually physically sing it. Like, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna hate myself a little bit for this, but da 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 by singing it, you can naturally anticipate the highs and the lows of a phrase and really get a feel for it. And we tend not to sing robotically, like da 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 da, <laughs> but without a sense of melody, we can sometimes play an instrument robotically. So now I'm going to play the phrase again as though I'm singing it. So I would just continue this process line by line until you're comfortable playing the entire right hand for the whole piece until it's nice and simple. And then what I would do is I would go to the harmony, which in this case is the left hand, and do the exact same process, taking it line by line. So a quick note before we move to the left hand part is the triplet in the right hand of the last line. So we're not gonna get too in depth with that today, but basically what a triplet means is to play three notes in the same time it takes to play one quarter notes. So it would sound like this. Triplet. 
That's actually one mental technique you, you can use is by actually saying triplet either out loud or in your head. Triplet, da, da, da. That helps feel the rhythm. One thing worth noting right away is that while the left hand has slurs to play smooth, the left hand doesn't. So keep these notes a little detached and this will end up lightening up the sound so that this doesn't end up sounding like too ballady and heavy. So first of all, same thing like with the right hand, you find the starting finger, the starting letter, and I practice reading notes in much the same way I did with the right hand. So I'm also gonna focus on keeping the left hand lighter in volume as well, since we want that beautiful melody to shine over top. And then you can go put the left hand together line by line. And then once you're good with that, you can play the right hand, you can play the left hand. It's time to put them together. When you're first learning a song hands together, it's important to work on small sections as opposed to the entire piece as a whole. Cause what's gonna happen if you try to play through the whole piece first time hands together, you're gonna play through it. It's gonna be really hard. It's not gonna sound that good. And then when you go back to start again, it's gonna sound basically exactly the same. But when you put it into smaller parts, maybe you just work on the first line at a time, or even smaller, maybe just the first two bars at a time, it's gonna come together a lot faster because you're gonna trigger your memory. So what I like to do is maybe play the first line of music for like five minutes or so, and that should get you really comfortable with it, almost to the point where you should have it memorized after about five minutes of playing. So if you don't have the part that you're learning memorized after five or so minutes of playing, then shrink it, shrink it to two bars instead of four bars, whatever you need to do, because the point is to not use the the sheet music as a as a crutch every time you go back you don't want to have to reread the notes again and again you want to start building your memory so that you use the sheet music just as a guide to make sure you're going in the right direction but not to specifically read exactly what notes you're doing time and time again does that make sense hope it makes sense because can't really have a conversation here so I'm gonna pretend this is my first time going through the piece hands together. So I'm gonna just look at one line. I'm gonna go really, really slow. So slow enough that I can be completely accurate. So your first attempt might be at this tempo I'm about to do, or it might be even slower. And one thing to keep in mind too, is you still wanna focus on keeping it beautiful, even though you are playing it slow. This will probably be pretty difficult your first passes through. It is a really difficult technique because your hands are doing two completely different things. Your right hand's playing smooth and your left hand's playing detached. So that can be, that, that requires a lot of concentration to be able to pull off when you're not used to that technique. So the best way to do it is to just go really, really, really slow. And then that'll give you enough time to like mentally process everything that's going on. And once it starts to gel in your brain, then you can start speeding it up incrementally. A good way to test your sense of tempo is to try playing along with a metronome at a comfortable speed. And what's going to happen is any spots where you're struggling, they're going to be really, really illuminated by playing with the metronome. So I've got it on hundred beats per minute in three, four time. This method of learning a piece is really efficient and really effective. So definitely try these, these little techniques out, whether you're practicing this piece or a completely different one. And of course, we're gonna be doing lots of future pieces together too, where I'll give you more suggestions along this line of thought. Stay tuned for the next video, which is going to be a discussion on minuets, just to give some more clarity to learning songs like this, as well as the previous video, which was a discussion on eighth notes. So if you haven't seen that, definitely do it. It'll help learn this song. And as always, the PDF for the song we learned today is on my blog, which is linked below. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed it, give this video a like and subscribe and sunshine and lollipops. See you later. See you later, Alicia. It's like I was writing a Dear Diary there at the end. Sincerely, Alicia.